This program is a paid presentation for Nahid Nenshi and is brought to you by the campaign to elect Nahid Nenshi for mayor. Welcome to today's TV Town Hall with mayoral candidate Nahed Nenshi. My name is Barb Mitchell. I'm going to be your host for today, and we are going to be posting questions to the mayoralty candidate to answer, and there are questions from you, the viewers, from the constituents of Calgary. The way we've gathered these questions is through the social network, through things like Twitter, Facebook, emails, and also direct phone calls to the campaign office. I'd like to start the town hall forum off by introducing Mr. Nahed Nenshi. Thanks for joining us. I'm great, thrilled to be here today, Barb. Thank you. And it's great to get to know you on a more personal level. I think a lot of Calgarians have got a snippet of who you are. Some have seen your videos, some haven't. For those of the people out out there who have not and they don't know much about you give us a, a little picture of who you are sure you know I grew up here in Calgary and I love this city always have and I grew up in a family that didn't have a lot of money but what I had was a lot of opportunity and that was really the underpinning of my whole political philosophy I graduated from excellent public schools I haunted the Forest Lawn Public Library I explored this great city by public transit I learned to swim not very well at a public pool and that's really the philosophy that I believe in, that every kid growing up in this city, whether they're in Marlborough or Scarborough, whether Tuscany or Chaparral, whether they're a first-generation Sudanese refugee or a fifth-generation Scottish Canadian, deserves that same opportunity to access the very best this city has to offer. And that's really where I come from. You know, since then I've done a bunch of things. I have a business degree from the University of Calgary. I've worked in big business around the world on issues of organizational change. Uh, folks may know me as a, someone who teaches nonprofit management at Mount Royal University, um, or also as someone who is an entrepreneur who runs my own small business with clients all over the world. Most folks probably know me from my work as a civic affairs columnist with the Calgary Herald and CBC Radio One, or as the founder of the Better Calgary Campaign and Civic Camp, which are organizations that are really trying to get citizens more engaged in how their city government works. All right, now as we approach the final stages of this election campaign, it's a very tight race, it's a very exciting race for Calgarians, and um, we wanted to know from you, why are you having this town hall TV forum? Well, you know, this is an exciting race, Barb. This is probably some of the most exciting politics we've seen in Calgary in a long time. It's a tight three-way race. You know, any of the three of us can pull this out uh, on Monday. And what I really wanted to do is give people the opportunity to learn a little bit more about me. You know, I've never been a very good soundbite politician. I can't even say my name in 15 seconds, let alone a lot of policy. And I thought this would be a really good opportunity for us to have answer some good questions in detail about the future of the city and what Calgarians are concerned about. All right, well, let's get right to the questions. Uh, I wanted to uh, let our viewers know you have not seen the questions ahead of time, correct? I have not. I wish I had. All right, so we're putting we them on the spot. We're going to make it real. All right, our very first question comes from an email, and this is from Dorothy Mailer of Southwest Calgary, and her question to you is, what is your plan to relieve the traffic congestion in Southwest Calgary in both the short and the long term? You know, that's a great question, and the reason I like this question so much is the way she said it was, how do we fix Southwest Calgary, rather than how do we get a ring road built? And I think that the question that Dorothy is asking is the right one. We've issued a very detailed policy, people can see it on nenshi.ca, called Let's Get Southwest Calgary Moving, because we have to get it moving. We've had 40 years of pinning all the hopes of the people who live south of the reservoir on a ring road that may or may not ever get built and we've neglected them and it's not right that someone can take 30 minutes to turn left on 14th street from 90th avenue if there's three flakes of snow on the ground we have to fix it and we can fix it by being smart instead of just spending a lot of money so we have to improve traffic flow on all the major arteries down south elbow drive mcleod trail and particularly 14th street and how do you do that well, we have a whole bunch of things we can do. Did you know that our light, traffic light synchronization system in Calgary is at least 30 years out of date? You know, there's new technology that can help you do that better. We need to look at lane reversals. We need to look at high occupancy vehicle lanes where they're possible. We need to look at the real choke points at the intersections at 90th, at Southland and at Anderson and figure out how we can get traffic moving through those intersections better than it does now. But most important, Barb, we need to invest in real public transit solutions for Southwest Calgary. The transit there just does not work well. And you know, if we can get as few as three people out of a hundred out of a pri private vehicle into an alternative form of transportation, 
we've solved the problem of congestion on 14th Street without bulldozing a single house. Are there any specifics in that long-term plan as far as trains going down 14th or, any, or anything? Uh, what in I really want to see, I want to see an express bus going down 14th pretty quickly. Um, I, it's not clear to me whether that bus needs its own dedicated lane or not, but we have to have uh, traffic uh, prioritization for those buses and make it easy for people from those neighborhoods to get to that bus. Um, because this is what's really going to work, not pinning our hopes uh, you know, on that ring road that will that may just serve to get people out of congestion on 14th Street right onto congestion on Crow Child Trail. Do you ever see the ring road happening? Well, you know, we do have to go back to the Sutina. Of course we do. Uh, and the city can play an honest broker role here. The last time around, it was just the province and the nation having a debate and the city stayed out of it. So the city might be able to help with the solution. But you know, I don't think we will ever see, and I know that people don't like hearing this, but I don't think we'll ever see a ring road that goes through the Weasel Head and up 37th Street Southwest. It's a very expensive solution. It knocks down a bunch of houses in Lakeview. And because most of the traffic on that road is going to be local traffic, 90% will be local traffic, not highway traffic, we're trying to solve a local commuter problem with a highway solution. And as I said, it'll just get people into congestion on Crow Child Trail that much more quickly. All right, well, let's move on to our next question. This one comes from Don Snook, and I'm going to read his question verbatim. It says, hello, I would like to ask Mr. Nanchi this question, and it will be interesting to see if he answers it. It seems all the mayoral candidates are staying away from this hot topic. The 911 PSC Public Safety Communications System has had many botched calls over the past year. If you become mayor, what would you do to change the 911 PSC system? This is an incredibly important question, and I'm sorry to Don that other people have not answered this question. As a matter of fact, just, y just yesterday, or a couple days ago now, the days are running together, a couple days ago now I had the opportunity to tour the PSC and to talk to the people who take calls there about the problems they've been having. And I'm going to correct the question. They haven't had a lot of problems over the last year. They've had a lot of problems over the last four years. And one of the real challenges we've had is what was a really good idea, what was a really good intentioned idea, which was to bring police, fire, and EMS dispatch and call centers all under one roof, turned out not to be so good in execution. The dispatch systems, the computers don't talk to one another. They're actually yelling at one another over cubicles. And it's been difficult to, even though the operators go through great amounts of training and they're great people, it's been difficult for them to be able to manage all three of those services. So we've put some short-term solutions into place uh, that include having uh, duty officers, police officers in the call center at all times so that they can assist with calls that are problematic. It's a good solution for now. We'll have to see if it remains as the long-term solution. The point is public safety communications, 911, is essential. It is so important and it is very surprising to me that this council has allowed this situation to go on for four years. We have to go in, we have to put some serious attention on this and we have to fix it. Because 911 is as important as the other two branches of our public safety, police and fire, and we have to treat it that way. And tell me about, about public safety. What can you do as mayor to ensure we feel safer in our city? It's an excellent question. Um, and in fact, we've released another one of these policies. I'm going to say that a lot over this time, I think. Um, better idea number 11, which was about every neighborhood in Calgary being a safe neighborhood. And there's a whole bunch of things we can do. It does start with the police. We need to help the police do more community-based policing. Uh, the Beat Cop program downtown has worked really well. And we need to expand those concepts to the other parts of the city. And we also give, have to give the police assurance that their budget will rise methodically and predictably with the growth in population. You know, what we've had in the past is we don't hire any for a long time, then we hire a whole bunch, it takes forever to bring them in, then we don't hire any for a long time. We got to move beyond that world where the police budget can be more stable. All right, let's move on to our next question. This gets more into the nuts and bolts of how City Council works. It's from James Young, and his question says, how will you lead City Council to make sure everyone is on board to move your election platform and this city forward? And I'm not talking about getting a bare majority on votes to pass certain plans. I'm talking about getting all members of Council on side long term with your vision. And the same question for our citizens who may not support your vision. How do you get Calgarians on side? So let's start with the first half of that. Yeah. City Council, how do you get everyone on board so that things can happen? Well, you know, I think this is actually the most important question of the election. If it, I, I think this is the ballot question, which is which of these three candidates can actually get City Council working again? So to back up, let's just be clear. It's not working well now. 
And in fact, these last three years have been the worst I've ever seen. Every vote is eight votes to seven. They're not listening to one another anymore. You can guess, well not guess, you can know how a vote is going to go based on who makes the motion. Nobody is well served by this. So we have to change it. And I like the idea in James' question of how do you bring everyone on board, but I don't know that that's the right answer because we will disagree on things. But we need to be able to have open, honest discussion debate and we need to make a decision and move on. So there's a whole bunch of ways to do it. The first starts with respect. It starts with the human relationship. You know, everyone on city council is a good person. No one runs for alderman to be rich or famous. You know, they're doing it because they want what's best for the city. And they're not well served by the system the way it is now. They, their, their role has been abrogated. It's been, it's been reduced to being a trained seal and voting one way on the eight to seven divide. So we start with a place of respect. You know, I've been around for a long time. I know the existing alderman pretty well. And I have a lot of respect from both sides of the aisle. You know, I'm very opposed to waste. And so those who self-identify as fiscally conservative like me because those are the things I focus on. But I also believe in investing in the things that are important to Calgarians, like parks and recreation and arts. So the ones who self-identify on the other side of the split also kind of like me. So that starts with that respect. Then there's some technical things. And I really encourage viewers who are insomniac, who really need help sleeping, to go to my website and read Better Idea Number 8 on Governance Reform. It is the most boring thing I have ever written. Mm -hmm. But it is fundamental. It's technical changes to city council, how they run their meetings, how they do their minutes, to open up, make it more transparent, make it easier for citizens to engage, and to take away some of the ability to grandstand and cause problems and have the wrong things coming to city council. And then finally, we as a city have to determine that it's important for us to help city councillors do their job better. So we have to really invest a little bit of time and a little bit of money in training. You know, if you are elected to city council and you've never had any experience reading a balance sheet, nobody's ever going to teach you how to read a balance sheet. And that's a big problem. We need to equip these folks to be able to do their job as governors of the city better. And I think starting with the respect, moving through the technical changes, and helping people do their jobs better will go a long way to rebuilding the city council. Okay, and as far as the second part of the question with Calgarians themselves, how do you get Calgarians to come together and support your vision? Because that's a difficult thing. There's a lot of people out there that think very singularly about their neighborhood, their needs. Um, how do you bring everybody together? You know, it starts with open, honest discussion and reasonable debate. One of the problems we have with, with council now is that it's very closed, it's very opaque. Even if you want to go speak to council, it's actually very difficult. You have to take the whole day off work and there's all these arcane procedures that nobody understands of how you get your five minutes. What we really need to do is move beyond this sort of bipolar, it's my neighborhood or it's the city, you know, NIMBY or someone else's backyard, and move to real conversations about the city. And this is a way that I'm really excited about how our campaign has gone. Because I pledged that I was going to campaign the way I govern, the way I will govern. And that is in an open, honest, transparent way, having conversations like this figuring out better ways to engage with Calgarians, sometimes using technology, but sometimes using good old-fashioned face-to-face conversation so that we understand together where we're trying to go as a city. And again, it doesn't mean everyone's on side for every single decision, but it means that we're all rowing in the same direction as a city and we're able to make decisions and move forward. All right, well, let's move on to another question. This one is a Facebook question from Jennifer. This one says, what makes Nenshi different than the other current front runners that would make him a better choice for Calgarians due to what decisions they've made in the past and what they currently stand for? Other than my fantastic hair and exceptional good looks, <laughs> uh, these, there, are th there are a few things to talk about here. And you know, the really good news about this, Barb, that we're down to a three-person race is that Calgarians really now have an option to look at the three of us. We all have very different programs. We all have very different backgrounds. And Calgarians now have the chance to pick the one they like the best. You know, at the beginning of this campaign with 15 candidates, you heard a lot of talk about strategic voting. And I want to vote to stop so-and-so from being elected. So how do I do that? And the good news is Calgarians don't have to do that anymore. They can just look at the three of us. And we do all have different things. And I don't want to speak for the other ones, right? But I think that it's fair to say that Alderman McIver has been on council for nine years. And he's talked the talk a lot, but it's been hard for him to broker solutions 
and move forward. And I think Calgarians are, are fair to ask, as they have, if you've been part of a broken system for so long, if in fact you contributed to breaking that system, will changing your title and moving you a few chairs over actually change the way that you've been able to run things and the way you've been able to manage things? I think that's a fair question. You know, and Ms. Higgins herself has also done enormous amounts of good for this city. She has done great things over her time. But she also comes from a very different kind of background, you know. I, I'm, I'm not sure she's ever been to a city council meeting. And Calgarians, I think, in her case, are right to ask, do you have the depth of understanding of what's going on here to be able to move forward? So what makes me different? You know, I'm a nice balance. I've been around City Hall for a long time. I know the issues, I know the people, I know the players. My external expertise is in managing big organizations through change, particularly as it relates to being customer focused. And that's one thing I think the city really needs to do. So I think that I have a great combination of a fresh perspective and ideas from the outside and external expertise combined with a real deep knowledge of the issues. So Calgarians who think that we need change, and I think most Calgarians do think we need change, can be comfortable that they're putting the change in the hands of someone with the expertise to be able to handle it well. Do you believe that you can be effective in dealing with the administration? Because that seems to be a big concern with a lot of people. We vote in our aldermen, we vote in our mayor, but it seems like the administration is really running the show. So there's 14,000 people that work for the city. And here's one thing the city does really well. It does hiring really well. So these are good people. It has hired good people. But it has proceeded to hire good people and trap them in a horrible soul-destroying system. And the soul-destroying system works really well in destroying people's souls. <laughs> so, you know, I've talked to a lot of people who work at the city, from the very senior management down to frontline uh, customer service people, the people who are on the streets. And with a couple of exceptions, you know, police officers seem happy with management. They all tell me the same thing. I always ask, am I just blowing smoke here? Or is the system actually broken? And if the system is broken, can we fix it? And, you know, universally I get the same answer. No, the system's broken. And then I say, well, why haven't you fixed it? And the answer always is because we lack the leadership. Because if I try to change something and I make a mistake, I'm going to get my arm chopped off by my boss. And my boss will probably get his arm chopped off by the city council. So it's a really risk-averse culture. And it's kind of perverse. You know, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I want to do a bad job for a small business person today. I want to do a bad job for a citizen today. But then they get to work, and the procedures make them do it. So the good news is, I've spent a lot of time doing organizational change work. And the hardest part of organizational change is, getting people to understand that you need change. And I think in the case of city workers and the good people who work for the city, they know that already. And they've been waiting, they've been thirsting for the opportunity to be innovative and to serve people better. So we'll do it. It's not gonna be easy. It's gonna take a long time. But at the end of three years, I want, my goal is very simple. I want citizens to say, you know, it's better now. When I go to get a permit, it's better now. When I take Calgary Transit, it's better now. When it snows, it's better now because I can get out of my neighborhood. It's simple as that. It's not going to be easy. We'll probably make some mistakes along the way, but we're going to get there together as a community, the administration, city council, and the citizens. All right, well, let's move on to our next question. This one is from Ian Godsman, and his question is much more specific with regard to transportation. What is a realistic timeline for getting LRT to the airport? Interested in your answer, both with and without the airport tunnel. Also curious about the costs of both scenarios. Great. So the city's plan is to get LRT to the airport someday, um, but that station would be on the west side of Deerfoot Trail. So the proposal is to run the North Central LRT line up the side of Deerfoot Trail in the Nose Creek Valley, which is, by the way, in a place where nobody lives or works. So you'd be willing, it would be okay to ask the question, why are you putting an LRT there? But when it gets there, it'll be across Deerfoot Trail from the airport. So the idea is there'll be some futuristic Disneyland-style monorail people mover system that will go over Deerfoot Trail into the airport terminal. Maybe I sound a little skeptical about this. Um, you know, I think that that is expensive and I don't think it's a great solution to, particularly for the people who work at the airport. You know, the airport has 12 million travelers a year, but they also have 18, 15 to 18,000 people that work there. And many of them live east of the airport. And this is one of the reasons why the airport tunnel is so important. You know, there's been so much drama about this tunnel. It's $500 million, it's the 
get a double city's debt, blah, blah, blah. It's none of those things. It's an underpass. It's an underpass that goes under a runway. It's going to cost about $150 million. And we have the money. We have some leftover crumbs from the province that we can pull together to come up with the money without having to affect property taxes. So we Where need does to the build 500 it. million come from? The 500 million is actually the cost of the entire Northeast Calgary road network. So it's like saying the new interchange at Crowchild and Stony Trail costs $2 billion because that's the cost of the whole ring road. So the tunnel itself is about $150 million, And that's what we need today because if we don't put it in the ground today, it's starting next year, it's going to cost 10 times that to build it under a live runway as if we could ever bore under a live runway. It's been in the city's transportation plan since 1995. It's just council kind of forgot to set aside the money, and now we've got to set aside the money, so we can do it. So your timeline is as soon as possible? ASAP, okay. before the runway starts. And so to, then to get back to the question of LRT, we're going to build that tunnel wide enough for an LRT right-of-way. We don't have the money to get the rail to the, to the airport right away, but we're going we're gonna to future-proof this tunnel. But what I'm also calling for is immediately, even before the tunnel is built, I'd like to see two express bus routes to the airport, one from downtown Calgary using Deerfoot Trail and one from East Calgary. The one from downtown Calgary is for travelers, the one from Northeast Calgary is for workers. Zero stop or one stop from the C train straight to the airport. I think this will make a huge difference. I was in Montreal earlier this summer. A funny thing about me is I'm kind of a transit geek. Mm -hmm. So whenever I travel, I like to ride public transit from the airport. And Calgary is one of the very few cities in which I've never ridden public transit from the airport. And I rode the new bus in Montreal. They have an express bus that goes from the end of the subway line downtown, the end of the metro line, straight to the airport. They call it Route 747, which I love. They only launched it in the spring. And I took it four times this year when I happened to be in Montreal on business and it was packed in the middle of the day, which just proves that when you build the right service, people will use it, and transit is an investment. So, we're gonna BRT have to move right on away, to the next question. LRT we're going to run out of time on this. I, I, I'm okay. not good at short answers. It's related, though. Mm -hmm. Transit, what's your take on the $3 park and ride at the C-Train? It's you know, caused a lot of concerns among Calgarians. We need to ditch it. We need to ditch it. I wrote a... Uh, Our studio audience likes that one. <laughs> I wrote a column the day after they passed this, calling it the dumbest thing this council has ever done. That was a tough decision for me to make because it was a long list. But, <laughs> but the issue is this. They didn't ask any questions. You know, it was supposed to raise $6 million just for security and maintenance of those lots. But the total budget for security and maintenance across the whole system was only $4 million. Council didn't say, hey, if we start charging, will fewer people park there? So what ended up happening is we put in this fee, it raised way less money than it was supposed to, and to make matters worse, ridership dropped. So overall transit revenue went down. So we put in a fee that cost us money instead of making us money. We've got to get rid of it, and we've got to encourage people to come back and take transit again and, and regain that revenue. All right, we're going to move to our lightning round of questions now. Ready. We've had lots of time to go in-depth on some of these questions that have been sent in, but we're going to try and have short, short answers on that. Um, we've covered the airport tunnel, which was the first question, so I'm just going to go on to the next one. How would you get some money to build a beautiful library downtown? We look at Vancouver's library, it's fantastic. We need, we need to buy some time. Uh, the problem is that the, the library has not been successful in raising funds beyond the seed capital that council gave it several years ago. So I've sat down with the director of libraries. I've asked him, what renos do we have to make to the central library right now for health and safety reasons to buy us a few years while we build that beautiful new central library? And he suggested that we can do that. So that's the goal. Keep the central library going right now until we find sources of funding, whether from government or private benefactors, to build a beautiful new jewel library that, that I want to be a centerpiece for downtown. All right, moving on to urban sprawl. This has been a big concern among uh, Calgarians, and I know it's part of your platform as well. Two things. Number one is we have to fix the way we finance growth. Right now, the people who live in existing neighborhoods explicitly subsidize new developments. We did that because we thought it helped housing affordability on the fringes. It is wrong. It has led to a $1.5 billion debt just in water and sewer infrastructure. So we have to come back and have one of those open, honest discussions with the development and construction industry and the city to say the cost of growth should be borne by the people who benefit from it. Once we do that, we have a whole bunch of incentives in place 
to help build more complete communities at the fringes. Communities where people can walk to the store, where lots of different kinds of people at different stages in their lives can live, where a family can get by with one car instead of two, three, or four cars. Once we start building these better communities at the fringes, and we're starting, some of the brand new communities like Mahogany in the south and Skyview Ranch in the north are kind of like this already. Once we start doing that, that's how we mitigate the cost of urban sprawl, which is, by the way, the single most important environmental and financial decision the City Council has to make. Okay, how will you reduce or eliminate wasteful spending at City Hall? It's a big question, but we need a short answer. You know, I always say that you don't, you're don't you not really a fiscal conservative unless you grew up in a working class family in East Calgary. <laughs> you know, I hate waste. I hate it. And we need to do some very be much better budgeting, much better financial management and reporting, and yes, much better auditing than we have done in the past. And I would suggest that every single department at the city starting in 2012 is gonna go through a rigorous process to figure out what are the key services we offer, how do we pay for them, and how do we eliminate duplication and waste. So how are we going to make things more transparent at City Hall? There's so many little things we can do. You know, one of the smallest things I've suggested is I'm gonna publish every month at the end of the month a list of everybody I met with that month so people know. Right? We need to bring back the real estate registry and financial disclosure so that people understand that when city councillors are voting on things, what are the conflicts of interest. We need to answer questions well instead of stonewalling citizens. And we need to post all the aldermanic and mayor expenses on the web. And yes, indeed, Barb, there's a better idea on that too that people are welcome to look at. All right, and how do you plan to engage with the community better if you become mayor? You know, I've been running this campaign the way that I wish to govern as mayor. And what's been really exciting about this is the fact that we've been able to have these great conversations. Instead of the old model where the city goes to an open house at the community association at 7 o'clock at night and puts a bunch of boards up, and if 20 people come, they call it a victory. We need to figure out how to get to Calgarians where they live instead of requiring them to come to us. Part of that is the use of technology. We've had a lot of fun using things like Facebook and Twitter, even for these questions, to engage in two-way discussion with Calgarians and to eavesdrop a little bit on conversations that Calgarians are having about their city. We'll continue to use technology. We'll continue to reach out to traditionally disempowered groups like New Canadians with work in their language. You know, I'm so excited that we are operating this campaign in 23 languages. Might even be 24 as of today. Um, so we'll continue to do that. It's easy, it's cheap, and it makes people feel like they're part of the process. Now we are in the final stages of this election campaign. Election day is Monday. You've done very well. What are your thoughts on this campaign and the future? Well, you know, I've been overwhelmed. I've been overwhelmed by the support of Calgarians in this campaign. You know, when we launched this, one of the things I thought in my head is, on election day, there are so many polling stations. We're going to need 150 volunteers on one day just to be at the polling stations. We're never going to be able to do this. 700 volunteers to date and growing even in these last few days. Calgarians have responded so well to this and I'm so gratified by that. Because at the beginning people said to me, now I had bullet points, now I had summarized things, now I had moved to the mushy middle, make it easy. And I said, I respect Calgarians more than that. We're ready to have these big deep conversations about the city and Calgarians have responded. So this has been fantastic I'm gonna and we're going to win. We're going to win. All right. Well, election day is Monday. There will be this video on YouTube along with detailed videos on NAHED's entire platform at www.nenshi.ca. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thank you and make sure to vote. This program has been a paid presentation for Nahid Nenshi and is brought to you by the campaign to elect Nahid Nenshi for mayor.